top secret project in Brazil was trying to save a rare bird from extinction. For the first time in over 20 years, Spix's macaws land on Brazilian soil again. Um resgate que agitou as relações diplomáticas entre o Brasil e o Paraguai. The hope is another generation of Spix macaw be released into the wild. That is the ambition, but it all depends on these few survivors. For the world, uh, not just Brazil, for the world it's a massive event. It's something that shows that if, if this works, it's, it's hope for bringing animals back from extinction. This project is something special and the charismatic story of the community, it's something that they've been waiting for for decades. There were so many times when they didn't think it was ever going to happen. We didn't think it was going to be possible at many times. Um, but yet here it is. And so I think as, as big as it is for Brazil, it's big for the whole world too. We've given up everything. We've sacrificed two and a half years of really, really hard times to be here and to, to see it through. And the only reason we stuck around was because of the birds. A lot of people would have left far sooner, but it's those, those blue birds that keep us going. This Kariyeva tree right here is where the last Spix macaw was caught in the wild and tomorrow will be where they are released. Um, it will be a new beginning for them and hopefully a new start for, for the species and for the future generations to come. My day-to-day -day stuff is usually wake up about six o'clock, start to prep all the food for the breeders and for the release aviary. Then once all prepped, go and feed, um, go do a check to make sure all birds are fine. This process usually takes me about 10 minutes on average. I uh, have to do this setup twice a day, so morning and lunchtime, but in the morning feed, they don't get the dry seed they get. Um, sprouts, cooking mix and fruit and veg. Okay, all done and time to feed the birds. I'm so excited for the release. I've only been here for just over six weeks and Cromwell and that, everyone involved, it's been a long journey for them and for me to be a part, to see them fly free in the wild, it's gonna be amazing. This lovely lady is going to be part of the first group to go out. And if all goes well and she nests, then her offspring will be the first generation of wild hatched, wild fledged species. So this is the beginning. This is the beginning of the next generation of the truly wild species. Transmitter is now fixed. This is the last step, last step before release. Once these transmitters go, go on, we're committed. These birds are going out in two days, so this is the point of no return. Next step, freedom. How do you describe a lifetime of passion that now gets to that pinnacle and you're at the tip of this mountain and it's about to happen. And no one's ever anticipated that this is actually going to be, we're going to get to this point. And now we are here. In less than 24 hours, that's going to happen. 
This is major for Brazil and I think that the people of Brazil actually realise how significant uh, this whole thing is for them and I think all the Brazilians are also in, in big anticipation for, for this happening. Right, one more batch. Sorry baby. Sorry baby. I'm just doing some physical examinations while we have them in hand so we can just quickly see how they're doing. There we go, that's looking good. I think the moment that those specs come out of that enclosure, the world will literally have changed. It's all a bit of a blur what happened on the, the day of the release. I didn't sleep the night before and four o'clock in the morning Martin arrived. He asked how I slept. I said I didn't and he said neither did he. And then prepared to go down to the kitchen to start preparing the food for the birds and uh, meeting people as they arrived for the event and then taking the food to the birds. Um, yeah, it was just a, a normal day taking the food to the birds but the emotions, I'm not sure, I can't quite remember how I, how I felt. We were waiting for that first bird and uh, so it was decided I would go and get some treats, uh, some of their favourite food and I, I had a feeling that when I left they would actually go out. As I walked away, I had only just got to the facility and um, Tyson came running to tell me that the bird had, had jumped out, so it was fantastic. An amazing relief. It was just so much pressure off my shoulders. It was, it was incredible, absolutely incredible. sponsors that have helped us get here and um, we are eternally grateful. It was just, it's incredible that people actually cared enough to put some money in that they're not going to get back. It's heartwarming to know that there are people out there willing to pay for a project like this. I have goosebumps and I am yeah, smile all the time and uh, it's so amazing. We were waiting for 16 years for this moment and the people here in the Katinga are waiting for 30 years. So I'm so glad that all went well, that the birds took a little bit longer, but the safer way. So I'm very, very happy. Now we have blue skies in the Katinga again and this is what we were waiting for 16 years. Atrás a esperança, né? A esperança que a gente possa ter conseguido corrigir os erros que a gente cometeu e a esperança de que dias melhores virão, né? Ela pode traz um olhar do mundo para Curaçá é, e dando aí oportunidades para melhoria de vida da população, para preservação e conservação da Caatinga. The nice thing about this morning when I when I got up and, and left the house, the first wild bird I saw was a Spix macaw, um, which is remarkable to say the second or uh, the next day after the release. But I, I walked out of the house and he was flying. He, he was, he's, they fit, the birds are really, really fit and flying really well. It was just the sacrifices and everything that we made and put into this project, it was just all worth it. Oh,
Oh, oh, oh, oh.